Hey everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel, I'm Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial, we're going to paint this gorgeous sunset over the ocean. So, let's get into it. So a nice and easy tutorial today, we're going to use the following colours. They are titanium white, cat yellow, matte orange, rose pink, crimson, sap green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, iris purple, raw umber and ivory black. Now I've got two colours here. I have stained the canvas in the brown, which is raw sienna. And I've used cobalt blue to create a wave in the foreground and create some shadows. I've used chalk just here for the sun because I don't want to create a harsh outline because we're going to use very light pastel colours. I've divided the canvas directly into two so I've got half of the canvas as a sky and clouds and we've got half of the canvas as a beach and a wave where we're gonna have this nice dark wave coming towards the foreground and some shiny wet sand that's going to reflect our sunset and then just some darker sand so just like always if you want to pause the video just please do so and copy down the outline and we'll get started now I've got all the warm colours on the left hand side and I've got all the dark shadow colours on the right hand side. I've got a few shades that are pre-mixed but I'm going to teach you how to mix them as we go along so don't worry. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to get a big blob of white and we're just going to block in the sun. And then we're going to create a Naples yellow which is just basically white and a tiny bit of yellow. So white and a tiny bit of yellow and you should get this really nice pastel shade of yellow and all we're going to do is we're just going to create a glow around our sun. So we're going to use really nice pastel colours for our sunset today. So lots of yellows, lots of light purples and pinks and blues. So we're going to get some more yellow now, still plenty of white so just a bit more cad yellow and we're just going to get a darker shade. So I've got it pre-mixed, but I'm just showing you how you can make it. It's just I'm lazy, so I don't like mixing paint so much. And I do it every day. But all you got to do is just add a little bit more cad yellow to your white. I'm going to swap over to a big brush, and we're just going to block it in. So all we're doing, we're just smearing on the paint. Don't worry if you've got street marks or some of the burnt sienna is shining through. That's quite normal. When using pastel colours, um, you can see quite clearly where you've missed and where you need to um, thicken up the paint and maybe rework areas. So that's why I always use a darker colour in the burnt sienna. So especially when I'm using pastel colours for a sunset, I can see where I need to rework areas. So we're just going to block all this in in a little bit darker yellow, but it's still got plenty of white in it. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to create the heat and the glow from the sun using a really nice color. Now what we're going to do, we're going to try to match the sunset on our beach. So we're going to try to create a shimmer on wet sand. So when the water retracts back, you get this lovely shimmering sand. And normally it's the color like a reflection. So think of a mirror as the same as the sunset, as the sky. So all we're doing, just to block it in, we're just using the exact same colours in the sky. We're going to use that in the wet sand. Now I'm just going to get a big blob of white. We're going to add a little bit of yellow. So a big blob of white and a little bit of yellow. And then we're just going to add a tiny bit of this cool purple. Now if you haven't got iris purple, I know it's quite hard to get. All you do is just add a little bit of purple and some cobalt blue together and you should get it. And all we're doing, we're just adding a dot of orange and a dot of pink. So white, tiny bit of purple, a dot of orange and a dot of pink. Now it looks very white as we're painting it on the canvas, but acrylics are quite deceptive and they always dry darker. So whatever you put down on your canvas or paper, they will always dry a shade darker. So even though it looks incredibly white in a minute, it will dry it. And it will have a little bit of yellow, orange and purple in it. So all we're doing, we're just trying to create a nice sky fading off into the distance. And then we're just going to add a tiny bit more orange. Now be careful because orange is very overpowering. A little bit of purple just to make it a bit browner. And some yellow. And we just add plenty more white. So it's really pastel. And we're just going to make these corners so on the left hand side 
which is going to make it a shade brighter and darker just by adding that orange and purple and yellow we're just spreading it into the white and it's just going to make it look a shade darker just on the edges of the painting so we've got this nice transition and we're just going to mirror that on the wet sand so if you think of glass or anything reflective like a mirror we're just trying to copy the colors so whatever we do in the sky we want to try to do on the wet sand so it's really really easy and then we're just going to get this color now iris purple is a very cool purple so if you just get something like normal purple this is normal purple and you add a little bit of cobalt blue to that purple you should get iris purple so all i'm doing i'm just adding purple and cobalt blue and plenty of white and you can add a tad of pink just a tad of pink and you should get this lavender color so purple a little bit of cobalt blue and a dot of pink and you can add a little bit of white and you should get a lavender color now what we're going to do we're just going to mix the yellow and white that we mixed around the sun and a little bit of that purple and white to it and what that does it just stops your sunset from going green this is a little trick so just by adding a little bit of purple to your a purple and white excuse me to your yellow and white it acts as like a buffer before we add some blue in our sky and this purple and white with a little bit of yellow and white just stops your sunset from turning green because if you add yellow to blue unfortunately you get green and then all we're gonna do we're just gonna get the purple and white and we're just now because we're going up away from the Sun the sky is getting cooler so the colors are getting cooler hence we're using more purple and white as we move away from the sunlight and then just to get more purple and white on our brush we're just going to match that look on the wet sand and one of the reasons we're using a cooler color so look, all I'm doing, I'm just rocking my big brush back and forth, just gently blending it into the previous color. One of the reasons we're trying to use a cooler, darker color in the corners is not only does it frame it, but we're going to sign it in the left-hand corner. So we want it nice and dark, so when we sign it, our signature um, stands out. So now we're just going to get um, some cobalt blue and some cerulean blue to mix together and that should create a royal blue we're going to have loads of white so cobalt blue and cerulean blue lots of white and we're going to make a really nice pastel blue I'm just going to add a little bit of cerulean blue more to it so you should get this lovely pastel blue and all we're going to do look we're just going to block in the corners so if you imagine this part of the sky is getting hardly any heat so it's not bright yellow because we're not near the sun so what we're going to do is we're going to use nice cool blues and what that's going to do is going to frame our sunset and frame our painting just make it look really nice and realistic so we've got this nice transition from the warm colors around the sun up to these cool colors in the corners and as i say we've got these nice darken corners and that gets you to focus into the middle of the painting so we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to darken this corner because that's where we're going to sign it later and then what we're going to do now we've got this lovely light source and we've got this lovely gradient as I say don't worry if it looks a bit haggard we'll go over the top and we'll rework areas we're just trying to match the colors that's the hardest bit is trying to match the colors so we're going to do the ocean now so we're going to get some yellow and white so some cad yellow and plenty of white and we're just going to create a little tad lighter just under the, the, the sun onto the ocean there we go don't worry if it's not straight or anything we'll use some tape and we'll neaten everything up later I just want you to work on the colors 
and the transitions. So try to think, if you think of the sun as a great big light, you're going to have all these warm colours like yellow and orange and pink around it. So all we're going to do, we're just going to add a little bit more yellow to that mix. Still very creamy, still very buttery, but just now look a tad darker. And while it's wet, we're just blending it into the previous tone. So we're just coming across, just gently pushing down with our brush. And then we're going to add a bit of the purple and white to the yellow and white. So we bridge the two areas. So we're going from nice and hot to nice and cool. And then last but not least, we're just going to get some of the purple and white, so no yellow now, so it's much cooler. It's the same colour as the sky and the beach. And we're just going to blend that for our ocean. And we just do here on the bottom. And then lastly, we're just going to get the cerulean blue and cobalt blue and white mix that we made earlier for our sky. And we're just, again, just going to frame the edge of the painting just to give it a nice darker edge, just to frame the composition. And we should have worked out where we want all the colours. Now, the problem is when you paint in acrylics, as I said before, it's very watery. So... It looks quite haggard so even though we've done all this blending it does look a bit haggard and don't worry if you can see the cobalt blue underneath that's quite good we know where we want our wave to be and where our clouds to be but what I tend to do I'm just going to speed up the footage because I'm just going to rework it so all I'm doing is applying the exact same colors over the top so rather than you sit here for 15 minutes and I just completely rework it what you just watched I'm just gonna fast forward it but all we're doing is we're just reapplying the exact same colors and then what I'll do in literally about a minute and a half I'll slow the footage back down and I'll show you how to blend and how to actually make it look pretty so all I'm doing because we've got watery paint and we've got lots of the burnt sienna shining through and because we're using pastel colors i'm just remixing everything so if you remember we use yellow and white around the sun and then we mix white a little bit of orange and a little bit of purple and yellow just around here and then just a little bit of yet more yellow and white around the sun same on the wet sand. We're going to add a little bit just up the top here. And then it was yellow and white and then purple and white mixed together just to bridge the gap between the yellows and the purples. See so if you just add a little bit more yellow around the sun and as you move up you just add a little bit more purple. There we go, just to make it cooler. And then all we're gonna do is mix purple and white so we don't get a green sky, remember? So we don't wanna go from yellow to blue. So we just use purple and white to bridge that gap. So as you can see, look, you see the top of the pan, look how rough and scabby and rubbish it looks so look we're just adding a second layer of paint with the blue and white now it just makes it look so much more professional so much more pretty now I've left the ocean just to show you the difference so look the top half is all blended and I've got a second layer of paint but the ocean still looks really rough because obviously we haven't redone it so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put the video back to the normal speed 
and I'm going to show you step by step how to blend because I know a lot of people at home don't know necessarily how to blend. So just here look around the sun the paint just wouldn't take for some reason sometimes when you paint with acrylics on canvas the first time you paint it just doesn't seem to stick to the surface so again if you use a hair dryer and just dry your work if you just then go over the top with the exact same color it should stick so a hair dryer is really really easy tool to use if your work is not drying and it's not seen to bond the paint is not bonding to the canvas just dry it with a hair dryer and you should be able to fill any scratches or any rough areas so look this area here I'm going to show you how to blend so we're going to get some yellow and white plenty plenty of white than yellow so more white than anything we will get a tad of orange and a tad of purple so lots and lots of white dot of orange and a dot of purple and look what we do we're going to use a big brush we're going to double dollop it on first so we're just going to put it all on first and look we're just going to go back and forth like rocking a baby back and forth easing up on the pressure and what it should do while the paint is wet it should just nicely blend and what you can do is if you have the other color the yellow and white you can just go back and forth with, between the two colors and just gently blend them into each other so if you can use a soft bristle brush that really really helps so any big brush that really really helps and then we're just going to add a little bit more orange to the mix and we're just going to make again look we're just blending it while it's wet just glazing over the top which is going to make these areas a little bit more orange and look if you just ease up on the pressure you can just gently really gently glaze it so look there's not so much of a jump between that purple and white and this orange so just by going over the top look you can just blend and try to make the transitions as seamless as possible because I know this is a bit repetitive but the underpainting is the most important bit because what we're trying to do I'm just using the same color here on the wet sand what we're trying to do is we're trying to trick the eyes by having the transitions absolutely seamless so that when we do the easy bit in a minute when we paint the clouds and the water over the top it looks super super realistic because all the background underpainting is the thing that creates the realism so we're going to get some orange and white and some purple and lots and lots of white a little bit of yellow now I think this was a bit too dark so look yeah it's a bit too warm so never mind the good thing about acrylics it's not like oils where we have to wait and if you change it it all turns to mush the great thing is look we can just add more white to the mix so let's add plenty of white, make it a lot more pastel. You can just go over the top. So there's not nothing you can't fix. And if you ever have an area of your painting that you really don't like, just dry it again with a hairdryer and then go over the top. Because we've mixed it, we just made it a little shade lighter. It looks a lot nicer. And I'm just blending in the purple and white. So again, look, while it's wet, I'm just gently glazing it. And just hardly touching the canvas hardly any pressure I'm just going back and forth rocking back and forth just trying to make these these jumps in transitions absolutely seamless and then I'm just gonna get some yellow and white and where we've just done that color I'm just gonna again just make it a lot softer so I'm just making everything really soft, really smooth. And a little bit of the orange, white and purple. So as I say, take your time. 
You can always pause the video and come back to it. Don't rush, just because this video is an hour long. If it takes you two or three hours to paint this, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone goes at their own speed. So look, now we've got this lovely, lovely transition from the yellow and white to the orange, white and purple to the purple and white. And it looks seamless, like you hardly notice it. So we've got all this blocked in. So that's the hardest bit of the painting. So well done, everybody, for blocking your painting in because the underpainting and all these really nice transitions is the hardest bit. So look, we've gone from yellow to blue without going green. Hooray! So what we're going to do now, we're going to put all the detail on top. So now we've got this fantastic underpainting. We're going to do all the clouds. So we're going to put our white sun in. So we're just using titanium white for our sun. And we're going to mix some yellow. We're going to add a tiny bit of white to the yellow. And we're going to add a tiny bit of orange. So yellow, some white, and some orange. And we're going to make a peach color. So think of a nice peach. We're going to make this lovely pastel peachy color. And what we're going to do, just like we did with the background sky, we're just going to sort of gauge the colors for our clouds. So if you imagine the sun's really, really hot. So we're going to try to use hot colors such as yellows, oranges, pinks and crimson to create clouds. So all I'm doing with a fine liner is I'm just creating some low forming clouds here. I know it's a little bit hard to see because they're in this such pastel orange, but we'll go over it in a minute. So all I'm doing, I'm just creating some little wiggly lines with a fine liner. I don't want them too straight because I want them to look realistic. So I'm just creating sort of rough wiggly lines. And we could have the bottom of a big cloud, why not? coming down so all these little orange clouds they're just the areas where the clouds are getting the most heat so as we move further away from the sun we're going to get slightly darker so we're going to add more orange to the mix we're going to add some pink just to make it a little bit darker so orange and pink and then we're going to add some white just to make it still very pastel so now our peach tone is just going a little bit more pinker and we're going a little bit of heat with some crimson just a tiny dot of crimson and a dot of brown brown just makes it a bit more earthy we should have sort of a sort of a foundation sort of color so think of like makeup sort of a nice sort of bright sort of pinky orange and all we're going to do we're just going to gently blend it into the previous color we're just going to create darker clouds so i'm using a fine liner and all i tend to do is i just push down really hard to get thick clouds and I ease up on it like i'm doing now to get really thin clouds so as i say just try to create wiggly lines and shapes. So look, if you want to make it really thin, just don't push down. If you want to make it big and blobby, look, just push down hard with the brush and it will imprint a thick cloud. So all we're doing, we're just coming into this lovely pastel orange. So I'm just coming into it and it should look like the clouds are getting darker as they move away from the sunlight. So you can have lots of little ones, look. You can have some low ones. The low ones tend to be more flat and straight. So that will just create some wiggly lines. So what I tend to do, I use a small brush, so like a fine liner, and I put plenty of paint on my brush. So look, I get loads and loads and loads of paint. And if I want thick clouds, I just push down really hard and I go back and forth. Watch, so I push down really hard 
and just wiggle my brush from right to left or left to right just going back and forth back and forth look so I push down hard and just go back and forth and that sort of imprints these sort of wonky clouds and then you can have little ones that sort of break off it so look you can just have little blobs just sort of smearing them off so these are all the bits of the clouds that sort of break away so if you want the clouds really really thin just don't put as much paint on your brush and just use just touch it down very gently and if you want them thick just push really hard so we're going to get even darker now because we're getting further away from the sun so we're going to have plenty of orange and plenty of pink so lots of orange lots of pink So we're going to mix that into our nice colour. We're going to add a little bit of crimson now, so a little bit more crimson, make it a bit harsher. And a little bit of brown, so we can get some brown. So the brown is just going to make it darker. And then we're just going to add some white just to counteract that. And a little bit of the cool purple. And the cool purple should suck a bit of the colour out and just make it look a bit more shadowy and harsher. So we're getting even a darker colour now. Now this colour, you remember I was saying that acrylics dry darker? Well when I was laying it down, see it's like a nice crimsony colour. It didn't look so harsh, but as it um, dried, it then looked really harsh. So stick with it because we can always fix it in a minute. We can always um, paint over it. But we're just doing the same trick that we're blending it into the previous color. We're still doing the back and forth with our brush. But we're just using a darker, more ready crimson color now. So it's exactly the same trick. We're just creating shapes and we're just creating little ones that are breaking off. So the little clouds that are just breaking off. Just using that colour look just to create little ones, little patterns. So look, we're just blending it into the previous colour. So again, just like the underpainting, we're trying to make the transitions look really smooth. So we can have some going off here into the corners. So again, just have some little breakaway ones, all different shapes going in different directions. Now just off camera, I'm just adding some purple. I forgot how zoomed in I was there. So I'm just adding some purple and a little bit of white to the mix. So I'm using our cool purple, so that was purple and cobalt blue, remember? The iris purple. And I'm just going to start blocking in over here. So if you imagine this left hand side, it's got hardly any sunlight. So it's really, really cool. So that's why we're using purples now to imply that this area is much more in the shade. But we still want to keep it really, really pastel. So just by adding some purple to our mix, still got a hint of the crimson in it, but by adding some purple and some white, it just makes it a lot, lot cooler. So this area that was the last bit of burnt sienna uh, shining through, we're just going to block in a nice big fat cloud. So this could be a really nice big cloud here in the corner. So I'm just loading up my brush. So you can see, look, there's still a hint of that crimson from the previous, previous color. So we've got that all nice and blocked in. And as I say, look, you can have some little floater bits coming off just to try and make it look all fluffy. So just go around the edges. And again, look, the ones that are the clouds that are quite low on the horizon, they're always quite straight, they're always just straight across. So I'm really liking the transition on the left, but I think the crimson is just a bit too harsh. 
I think the jump from the orange to the crimson just doesn't work. And that's the thing with painting, sometimes it's not till you put the colour down on your canvas that you notice that it's a bit too harsh. Because the problem with using harsh colours, what it does is it brings it forward into the foreground and we want to push this area right back into the distance. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just using the purple that we've added to the mix to make a really sort of pastely purple grey and I'm just going over the top of those crimson clouds just to make them look more pastel and more far back. It should push them back a little bit more and make it look further away. So again, look, you can just have little breakaway ones. That looks much more realistic with that lovely transition in our underpainting now. So this is starting to look very realistic. So that's what I say, sometimes you just got to take a step back and just see what works and what doesn't. Don't be afraid to change your painting. So let's just shade in all these clouds. It's actually quite easy. Look, you just literally go over the top of them. If you dried your painting with a hairdryer, it's all dry. You can just literally color them in. So let's just do that. Look, just match the shapes. As I say, don't worry if you've got a little bit of crimson shining through. So let's just go over the top. So again, just take your time. Just rework it if you have to. So we'll just do this area here. And then what we'll do is we'll create another color to make the transition less harsh. So we've got this lovely purple now, so it's pushing it back, but we've still got this sort of blob in between where we've got the crimson and then the lighter orange. And we wanna create sort of a light effect around the sun. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna sort of bridge the two gaps. So between the colors, we're gonna use a bridge color. So look, we've got this nice purpley color and we've got the harsh crimson. We're gonna mix them together and sort of make a in-between color. We're gonna add some white. And we're just gonna make a sort of warmer gray, if you say, so to speak. So just by adding lots of white, still got plenty of purple in it. And then what we're going to do, look, we'll test it. Here we go. That looks really, really nice. So we're just going to put that in between. So as I say, sometimes it's worth taking a step back from your painting. Just looking at it with fresh eyes. Because when you're real close to it, you can't really sort of gauge the colours. So, when I'm painting, I'm always getting up, taking a few steps back, and having a look. So we're just going to use this lighter shade just to bridge into the orange. So anywhere where the orange sort of isn't getting a bit of sun. So if you imagine these edges here, I've got this sort of back to the sun. So we're just going to shade them in with this sort of pinky warm, warm sort of purpley grey. Just these areas here. So that's looking lovely already. And look, see, look, we're just going to bridge these two colours together. And we can have some, look, just floating away. So we'll bridge them together, all matches. So just like the underpainting, it's the transitions that trick the eye. That's what creates the realism. So you can see here how realistic this area looks. But can you see here with this really harsh color, how horrible that looks? It just stands out because your eyes are so good that you can notice it straight away. So what we're going to do, we're just going to make a really nice warm peachy color again. So we're going to mix yellow, white and orange. So yellow, white, and orange. So we get a really nice peachy color again. 
There we go. So it's still got plenty of orange in it. So it's just a bit louder than before. And we're just going to paint in the bottom of this cloud. So I'm just going to block it in first and then we'll work on the transitions afterwards. So if you think the base of the cloud's going to get the most sunlight, so that's why it's this nice warm colour. And what we can do, because it's a shade darker, I'm just going to blend it into the pinky orange. So just on the bottom here, these areas will be getting the most sunlight. So they're going to be the warmest. So that's why we've got plenty of orange. So look, just making this area a little bit harsher. Just so they stand out more. And then we're going to go back to our middle colour. So we're going to go back to the middle sort of warm sort of lovely lavender colour. We're just going to add a little bit of orange to it to a little bit of heat. But still got bits of um, purple and pink in it. So pink's a really good colour to use to jump between orange and purple. So by adding a little bit of pink, tiny bit of brown, and a little bit of purple, you can just make these, and plenty of white of course, you can make these sort of really nice, warm, sort of purpley pinky greys. So look, all this area will sort of be getting some sunlight because it's directly above the sun. So you've just got to think where the light would be shining. Imagine you had a candle and you were shining it underneath your hand. All the base of your hand would be lit up, wouldn't it? So look, by using pink, look, by using pink, you can sort of blend just a little bit of purple and pink together. And plenty of white, of course, to make it nice and pastel. You get a really nice sort of warm pinky purple. And look, you can just sort of blend the orange and the purple together. So it's, again, it's, it's called a bridge tone because what it does is it just sort of binds the two colours together. So look, so now it's not as harsh. The jump isn't as harsh. We got rid of all that really harsh crimson. And then now that is looking lovely, I'm just going to get my nice purple. So I'm going to get my nice cool purple and white. There we go. And I'm just going to smooth the edges into that color. So again, the transition is absolutely perfect. So as I say, it's very repetitive, but that's the difference between the pro and the student. It's just knowing to keep working areas till you get it right. So all this area, look, the corners won't be getting as much sunlight. And now the transition looks super real. Let me just cover up some of that horrible crimson. There we go. This is looking realistic. It's looking fantastic. So I'm just going to get a little bit of cad yellow and just on the tips of these clouds I'm just going to blend them in. So these are the areas closer to the sun so they will literally be super bright and highlighted. So just by using some really luminous cad yellow look you can just go over the edges of these clouds because they would be just getting so much sunlight being close to that sun. So that you can even do the ones that are really low. So we do the base of these ones. And then load up my brush. Look, we can just put some that are really low. So just like we did with the darker shade, look, you can do that with the cad yellow. Just have some that are just above the horizon. And I'm just going to make my sun a bit bolder. So I'm just putting some more titanium white. Just having little bits come off it so it's not as circular. Because the sun always looks a bit blurry, doesn't it? It's super bright. So 
smudge it with my finger. So that background sky is looking fantastic. So we've got this lovely light source, we've got this lovely transition in our clouds, we've got this lovely transition in the background sky. So it's going from warm to the cool tones. So now we've got everything blocked in, we've got this fantastic sky. We're just going to neaten up our ocean. So we've still got some of the burnt sienna shining through. So what I tend to do is I use chalk because I don't want to get dirty pencil marks. So I measure my horizon. I use some chalk just to measure it and put some marks on my horizon. And then I make sure my painting is dry. So I don't want to lift up any of the paint that we just put down. So please dry your work with a hairdryer before applying painting tape. Now painting tape is really cheap. You can buy this for literally like a dollar or a pound. And all you have to do look, is just measure a straight line, put it on. And then if you get the colors that we used previously, so that was just yellow and white and a tiny bit of orange and purple. You can go right up to the tape and create a lovely straight horizon. So go right up to the edge of the tape. And then if you've got any of the canvas shining through that you've missed, you can just rework it. And also you can get a lovely straight horizon. So I'm just get some purple and white. Look, go right up to the tape just so it's got a really nice sharp edge and we're going to start painting our waves so our sunset is looking spectacular with our sky so we're going to start putting our waves in them creating our beach so we're going to introduce sap green and some cobalt blue so we're going to mix sap green and cobalt blue together to create a sort of really nice sort of indigo-y color we're going to add a little bit of brown. My brown is just covered in paint, but we're going to add a little bit of the raw umber and a little bit of purple. And we should have the color of a wave. So we've got this greeny blue color and the purple and brown just make it more earthy. And we're just going to add a tiny bit of white because we don't want it too harsh. A little bit more brown, make it a little bit more earthy. There we go. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to test it before uh, I think that looks perfect. So not too dark, not too harsh, just right. So I'm just testing it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap to a flat headed brush. So this is a flat headed brush. So you can see, look, it's got a flat head. And the reason I use that, I'm going to load up my brush. So I'm just going to get loads and loads of paint on my brush is because the flat edge is so straight it's really easy to do straight lines look it's so easy to then paint a wave so if you want to go like across so we're going to go across with the brush look it's so much easier to block it in and create almost straight lines like don't worry if it's a little bit wonky waves are wonky but what you want to do is just use that really sharp flat edge and it's just so much easier to block it in So all I'm doing, I'm just going to create the dark shadow of this wave. So as the water rises up, you get this lovely dark sort of shadow. Now as we move towards the right, we're going to change colour because we're going to get brighter. So but first we're just going to, we're just going to block in this bit. And this is just sort of the sharp edge where the water sort of meets the sand. So what we're going to do, we're going to change colour to a warmer color underneath the sun. So we're gonna add some orange to our mix. So we're gonna get some of our mix and move it to the side and we're gonna get some orange and brown. So plenty of brown and orange. And we're gonna make a sort of brown leather color if you think of that. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put loads of it on our edge of our brush. And we're just going to create this nice sharp edge first and just blend it into the previous color. So the reason we're doing this is because if you think just like the clouds, all this area would be in the sun. So it's much more vibrant and much brighter. But it's still a harsh color because it's nearer to the viewer. So look, I'm just blending it into that dark greeny blue. Sorry, it's gone a bit out of focus there. Stupid camera. So there we go. We've got this lovely blend. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to create the sharp edge of the brush. And we're just going to create some definition in our wave. 
So if I zoom in for you, look, we're just gonna, we've got these two shades now. So we're first, let's do the right hand side. And we're just gonna use this nice sort of brown color. And all I'm doing, I'm just using the sharp edge just to create straight lines. So I'm just creating sort of swirl shapes, sort of coming up around from the wave. So look, just coming down. So as I say, you can make some areas thicker and some smaller. So you should try to have them quite random. So all I'm doing, just loading up the edge of my brush, look, and just coming down and sort of scooping, look, scooping under the wave, just to create the definition and texture. And while we've got that color, I'll go right up to where it blends into the darker greeny blue. But we'll just do this area at the top here. So we're just going to go straight across and we're just going to create some divots to create the illusion of waves. So we're just going across, try to go quite flat at the horizon because obviously the waves are quite flat and very straight. And don't use too much paint at the horizon. Try to have the ones at the horizon, so where the tape sort of meets the ocean, try to have that very, very thin. So look, all we're going to do is swap to the dark shade, and we're just going to do the same trick. So when I mixed it, my um, my color had dried, so when I remixed it, it was just a tad darker. So I'm just going to block this in so it all matches, because I don't want this being a a shade lighter than these divots so I'm just going to re-block that in and then all I'm going to do look I'm just going to create the same sort of scoops look, little scoops little lines coming towards that edge just to create the realism and we'll just do the corner so do some scoops so it looks like the waves bellowing in coming into shore and then look, in the background, what we're going to do, we're going to have a harsh wave. So we're going to have a big wave coming in. So I'm just going to really push down and create a thick wave here. So this could be like a big boy coming into the shore. So this one is just sort of fading off look, into the distance. And then as I go towards my tape, so look, these ones are quite, quite thick and going across to create these sort of harsh big divots but look as I go up to the tape I'm just going to create really sharp lines that are really really thin so they're not as harsh because again I want to push them back so look barely touching look really really straight look they're almost like a razor blade look really really straight really really dinky and look at that so that's looking fantastic so we're going to remove our tape Dun, 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 dun. And we should have a perfectly straight horizon, all measured, all in proportion. Look at that. And if you have any chalk marks, unlike a pencil, it won't leave any horrible marks. Look, you can just literally wipe them away and off they go. So we've got this absolutely fantastic blocked in C now. And I'm just going to use that harsh edge and I'm just going to make this wave a little bit more darker, a little bit more thicker. So I'm just going to make him a little bit more big and chunky. So there we go. So that is looking awesome. And then just here we're going to create some foam. So we're not going to do too much detail because I want this to be quite harsh and in the shade. Because this area is not getting any sunlight. So all this is getting sort of dark and cooler. So I want to mix a nice dark cool shadow colour for the foam. So I'm just going to get some cobalt blue and some cerulean blue just to make a royal blue. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit of brown, just a tiny bit and loads of white. So I'm going to create this really cool dark blue. So there we go, that's look really nice and cool, doesn't it? Look at that, that's lovely. So I'm going to load up my brush. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to leave plenty of the shadow. I'm just going to create the illusion of some sea foam. So I'm just curling my brush round. Still leaving the top very dark, so that shadow colour. 
and I'm just putting some sea foam for the wave. So imagine this wave is crashing into the beach. I'm just creating that sort of sea foam. And look, if you make a mistake, if your painting's nice and dry like mine is, you can just wipe it away with a baby wipe. So let's just have a little bit of curling around here in this corner. But I want to leave this corner really nice and shadow so it looks really, really harsh and in the shade. And then I can load up my brush. And we can have some more just here. Just to join the two colours together so you don't notice the transition. And then we could have some in the background, couldn't we? We could have the other wave. could just have a little bit of froth coming out of it. Not too much. Because again, I want it nice and harsh. So let's have a little bit over here. Just tiny. So all these little finishing details, look. You don't need to put hundreds of details. It's the colour that does the work. Now what you can do, because we've got this nice harsh ridge, you can outline it and create the sort of froth of the water as it comes up onto the shore. So you get that nice sort of frothy outline. All the bubbles come up. But we still want it in the shade, we still want it really, really cool. And especially in this corner, because this corner is not getting as much sunlight as the right hand corner. So we're still using this nice dark blue. So just like the colour for the outlines change, I'm just going to go up to where it joins into the brown. And all I'm going to do, look, I'm just going to create some little zigzags. I'm not going to do loads, I'm just do, do a few. They're joining up to that edge, and that's all the sort of sea foam and froth that sort of bubbles up when you get a wave. But I don't want to use white because I don't want it to be really comic y. I want it to all match and look realistic. So that's why I'm using this blue. So as we move towards the right and we get brighter and towards the sun, we're going to add. A little white to the mix to create the same colors we had at the top of the painting so we're just going to add a little bit more white to the mix but it's still got plenty of the two blues in it so again once it's dry it will dry darker it will still look very blue so as I said when we add it and it's fresh and wet it looks a little bit more white but as it dries it will look more blue and we're just going to outline the edge again and then we're just going to create a few zigzags, not many, just to create the um, illusion of some froth. So as I say, you don't have to do loads, it's more just to teach you the colours. So if you're enjoying the tutorial and you think that you've learned a lot from today and the lesson, um, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much to everyone who's liked and subscribed already. It's really, really helping the channel and it's really, really helping other artists find the videos on YouTube. So the more people subscribe and like and view, the more other artists get to learn and watch the tutorials. So thank you very much for the support. Um, don't forget to tag me at mstuartpaintings. Um, on Instagram, if you do a version of the tutorial, I have a section on my Instagram called the Hall of Fame where I like to shout out people's um, versions and hopefully get them some more followers and get them some recognition for their artwork. So please don't forget to, to tag me at, at Mship Paintings and so I'm aware of it when you do a nice tutorial. So that is looking very realistic. So we've got this lovely sea foam, we've got this lovely waves, we've got our sunset over the ocean, and all the underpainting is tricking the eye. So last but not least, we're just going to um, make the waves very, very dark. So all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add some black to our green and blue mix that we used for our wave. So I'm just gonna add some black, some sap green, and so black and sap green, a little bit of cobalt blue. And we're just creating an off black. We don't want to have too black, so we don't want it 
very comic-y. We've added a tiny bit of brown. And all I'm going to do with fine liner, I'm just going to make an even harsher colour here. So what we do is we save our darkest darks for the foreground. And what that does is it brings this area closer towards the viewer. So if you imagine that nice wave is very close. And then this last bit is even closer. So that's why we add a little bit of black to the mix. So I can just shade that part in. And what that does is it just brings that far left hand corner really close to the viewer. So by using really really dark colors in the foreground it just brings it towards you. And then what we're going to do we're just going to take some raw umber and we're just going to mix it into that. And we'll see is this too green? Yeah. So we're just going to just get pure raw umber or you could use burnt umber if you want to. So just pure brown. You can add a tiny bit of black and blue if you want to, just to make it even darker. And all we're going to do, look, we're just going to shade around our wet sand. And we're just going to block this final corner in. So it's the same principle. You just want to have darker corners. And that gets your viewer to focus down the middle. And because our sun's obviously a bit to the right, it just gets people to look towards it. So it's a little trick. And what you can do if you want to, is you can change the shape of your sand using the darker brown. So if your sand's a bit wonky like mine is, look, you can just go around it and change the shape of it. Just to make it a little bit sharper. So if you don't like the shape, look, you can just change it. Look, you can just take a bit away. So I'm trying to create like a nice sharp edge. Here we go. And I think she's finished. So I've signed her in the bottom left hand corner. So you've learned how to paint a sunset over the ocean. You've learned how to do a gradient in your background sky and ocean and an underpainting and how to go from yellow to purple and to blue so you don't get green. You've learned how to match the colors in the sky with the clouds, so how to do transitions to make your clouds look super realistic. You've learned how to do warm colors under the sun on your waves and how to use darker, cooler colors on the left hand side to bring those waves towards the viewer how to outline your ocean water, how to um, paint sea foam and froth on your waves and how to darken your corners to get the viewer to focus down the middle. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Murray. Um, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do so. We have plenty of landscape painting tutorials. I think there's literally about 80 to 100 videos now on my channel. So thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed painting along with you guys at home. Don't forget to tag me at mstuartpaintings on Instagram and happy painting and enjoy yourself painting along. See you soon guys. Bye.